So what we've done is we've broken our network up into two realms. And realm A contains two clients, a server, and a proxy. So this client has the ability to understand application ID 0, 1, and 2. So 0 is always the base protocol, so everyone has to have an application ID of 0. Okay? And then this has got 1 and 2, this has got 1, 2, and 3. This has got one, okay? And of course the proxy needs to understand one, two, three. If you did, you could put, I said, in there, you could put F, 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 and he would understand anything which, can, which comes into it. Then on this side, we've got another realm. He's got a proxy here, and he's got two servers, which must be commuted to through here. And he's got an application ID of two, and he's got an application ID of three. Of course, he understands two and three. So, on the concept is, is that if he wants to talk to him, he will format his message to say, okay, I want to talk to, I can just talk to him, and I can give him an application ID of two. He will have in his routing table say, then send it to him, he would then say, okay, David, and send it to there. Okay? So that's the simple concept of the realms. So we go into the next slide. It gives you more of the terminology within an IMS network. So within an IMS network, you've got the DRA, which is handling the distribution. So that's now set up to have the routing. Same thing, but obviously you have edge agents here to protect your networks. But the same concept of routing. Okay, so this is now going to sort of Peer connection. So, as we said before, the transport layer is a client server connection, TCP, SMTP, and it can be encrypted in the transport layer. The transport client connection uh, request. So, as set up um, within the specification, the specification says a client should be able to should be able to use TCP or SCTP. But a server or an agent a routing agent must support TCP and SCTP at the same time. So that's giving you the concept that a client has a choice between TCP or SCTP. So you don't have to know at the front which one he's going to use. So if you think the simple basis that on the, the first hop you're coming to to connect into, he must be able to accept connections between TCP and SCTP. So in effect, you can have, at one time, two transport connections at the same time. But only one of those will get to live. Okay. So, the spec says that you should apply them in order of preference. You can try um, TCP, you can try SCTP, you can try TLS, you can try DTLS. Okay. So you try those four options. And the one which wins, you use. But if you try and set up two connections, so if you've got a connection set up, you try and set up, an, say, an SCT connection, that will get bounced out. So it'll say, I've already got a connection there. You can't create another connection uh, to me. So again, you can use DNS to get available transport layers for peer connections. So DNS, you're using that simply to get IP addresses, ports, listening ports, etc. is fairly standard. Again, so you can only have one transport connection layer for a peer-to-peer -peer connection. So the peer FSM file state machine is defined defined in the base protocol. What the base um, protocol has also done is defined the tables, they defined a couple of tables that actually give you a minimum requirement of how you set up your peer table resources. So if we talk about a peer, so a peer connection is like setting up a ISDN connection. So you've got network user in for ISDN, SAP, TLA, et etc. et cetera. On this basis, they've broken the table down into host identity, contains the node identity of the peer. So for example, we have one which is node realma.com. The status contains the state of the peer. Whether it's, these are some of the finite states, whether it's closed, open, remote open, uh, client open. Whether it's static or dynamic defines if the peer was discovered or configured. If it was discovered, you've got the expiration time, which is how long this peer can live for. And then you've got TLS enabled, so if TLS is connected, 
you have other implementation dependent on information. Is any good? It's a bit small. I mean, you start off, this is if you look at how we configure our resources, you will see those things in there. But you'll see lots of other things as well. Um, but they did start to give some kind of basis of how you set up your peer table resource. So here's kind of an overview of the peer table. So from our diagram we had, if we look at node 1, uh, quickly go back to the, the, the first peer table. So here's node 1, he's got one peer connection, okay? So he's in states of open, he wasn't dynamic, so what was that here? He's just, that's his, that's his host name. And if we look at, uh, so he's got a connection to node 4 realmain.com. Okay, so that's his one connection. Then the other uh, peer table is set up for node 4. So he had four connections to each one of these realms, of these nodes within them. So he had a connection to three internal nodes and one connection to an external node. Okay, I've just put on here. Yeah. But obviously, they use security across the border between the two nodes. Okay, so then we have the basis of routing. How does this basic rail routing does? So the base protocol specifies uh, basis of realm based routing table for requests. So we've got the realm name. It's the, the name of the realm that the incoming message is targeted to and contained in the incoming message destination realm ADP. So I get a message in as an ADP with the destination realm, and in there it's got a name just saying, I want to send it to here, please. Mm -hmm. Then you have the application identifier, which is saying, okay, here's the application ID I want to send it to as well. So these, within the base protocol, it only defines these two ways of actually the information within the message you're looking at to route it to the next hop. Now in reality, you also bring in um, destination host, so I can actually direct it to the node I want to. Uh, so with this way, I can only send it to a realm, I can't send it to the host within the realm. But I can obviously um, expand this within outside of the base protocol and say send it to a particular host. The other routing advancement you have as well is I can do it by a particular name of message, I can also do it by what's the contents of the message, etc, etc. So the base protocol is a really simple one, but it's, you couldn't go into with a, with a, with a routing agent with only those, um, because they, they're quite limited for what you can actually do for your routing. They then give you this local action, uh, which is it's either local, so message you process on the node, so if you're a server, you know that if you get a message in decimal for you, that it's going to be processed on this node, on me. Relay, so the message routes to the next hop without modifying any non-routing AVPs. Proxy, it'll be routed onto the next hop, may modify non-routing AVPs, or do a redirect. Return answer the routing information back to originating peer. You have the server identity, so that's the name of the node which you want to route that message onto. Okay? And again, it's got static or dynamic, dynamic, whether that route has been found configured or dynamic found, which I think you'll find that redirect, obviously that is a dynamic thing, so you add that into your table, um, your routing table, and it have a particular lifetime within that routing table before you go back to the redirect server to ask for any other redirections. So here's an example of the round routing tables. So you've got an example for node 4. So he's, what this is saying is saying, if I get in a message which tells me to route to realm A with application ID 1, I will proxy it through node3.realma.com. Okay? Then for realm B, if I've got a realm for realm B with application ID of 2 or 3, I will proxy it to node3.realmb.com. Okay? So, Fairly straightforward to get the messages through. And then you've got an example for node 3, realmb.com, which remembers on this side, which you've got, if you come in, say realmb.com application ID, I'm going to send it to the node 1, which supported application ID 2, 
And if it comes in with application ID 3, I will send it to application ID 3.